Last month, I posted an Instagram reel, not realizing that it would become my most viewed piece of content of all time on the app. Like more views than I had ever gotten in the 10 plus years that I've been posting on Instagram. If you've recently had a video go viral and you're looking to retain that momentum, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to figure out exactly why your video went viral so that you can replicate those results to grow your audience at a much more accelerated pace. And I'll be sharing the strategies that I've been testing on my own account over the last few weeks since that viral video that have actually worked for me and given me results. If you're new here, I'm a fashion and beauty micro influencer based in New York City, and I use this channel to help you create great content grow your digital brand, and earn sustainable income from content creation. So if any of that interests you, please consider subscribing. So the video that I posted that went viral was me talking about the five celebrities I was most excited to see at the Met Gala this year. And this was on the Monday of the Met Gala, but a couple of hours before the red carpet. So we are going to get into exactly why I think this video went viral and what I've been doing to replicate the success of that video, which has helped me get like 15 to 20 times more views than I had previously been getting on my Instagram reels. But to better understand the strategies that I'm going to be talking about and to give a little bit of context to what exactly has helped grow my reach on Instagram by over 800% in the last month, I wanna quickly walk you through something called the hourglass theory. The hourglass theory is super straightforward. So basically I believe if you want to grow on any platform, first you need to start posting a ton of content and then take a step back and look at what is working. And of course, the content should still be content that you're interested in creating. So if you want to be creating beauty content, you might try posting a couple of different types of beauty content, like product reviews, luxury versus drugstore, tutorials, hauls, all of those different things to see what people are most interested in. So that's the broad part of the bottom of the hourglass where you're testing a lot of content. And then when you find something that works, you want to zero in on it. Think about people like Addison Rae, who was an early TikTok breakout star in 2020 because she just kept continuing to post dancing videos, or even a more recent example like Alex Earl, who repeatedly does different versions of get ready with me makeup videos. Those are examples of people who found their thing and kept running with it until they grew a massive platform. And then once you come out of the middle of the hourglass and you have a bigger audience, they naturally will want to start knowing more things about you. So if you have been creating beauty content, but you think you want to start creating fashion content too, once you have a bigger audience, that will naturally kind of start to come about because people might ask, hey, I love your top that you're wearing with this makeup, like where's that from? And then that's your next step and segue into going a bit more broad with your content. But the key is to understand that the middle of the hourglass is your opportunity to accelerate your growth. So with this in mind, let's get into exactly what I started strategizing and making note of as I saw my views start to climb on this one video. I think the big question with any viral piece of content is just to make sure is the topic of this video or the style of this video something I want to be known for. Because every once in a while, we could go viral for something random, something that we did not anticipate going viral, that was just a silly trend or a voiceover or something we threw up because we didn't have anything to post that day. And so the big question here is just to confirm, is this something that I would like to continue replicating and like to become known for like the example of Alex Earl or Addison Rae. Another way to get to this answer more quickly is to think about how long you've been a content creator. Because if you're a brand new content creator and you haven't yet even had the time to start strategizing or thinking about a niche or what you wanna be known for, then that viral video may have answered that question for you and you can continue to iterate on that type of video and grow that way. However, if you are a more established content creator, you wanna ask yourself if this video that went viral ties into what you want to do, your long-term goals, and what you want to be known for as a creator. If you're a seasoned content creator, you may already have content pillars and types of content that you like creating and that your audience likes consuming. So for me as a fashion creator, I felt so happy to see that this video about Met Gala style 
was really going off and getting big views for me because as a fashion content creator, that works out perfectly. If you haven't yet established your content pillars as a creator, I actually have a free guide called the Influencer Launchpad, and there's a whole section in there that talks about content pillars. So you can grab it from the link down below in the description box if you're interested in fleshing out your content pillars. Once you've confirmed that the topic of your viral video is something that you want to create more about and something that you'd like to be known for, the next step, before you start creating brand new videos is to do more with this one video that already proved to be the silver bullet. Let's not create more work for ourselves. Let's work with what already has been proven to be successful. And I recommend doing three things with this viral video. The first thing I would definitely suggest doing is to either remix or stitch your video. So in the example of my viral video, that was five celebrities I was most excited to see at the Met Gala. I hadn't seen yet what they were going to wear. So what I did immediately after the red carpet when I had seen everybody's outfits was create a video saying, these were the five celebrities I'm most excited to see. That was the beginning. And I put a little like remix with reactions incoming on the screen. And then from there, I jumped into, okay, last night was the Met Gala. I was most excited to see these five people. Let's see what they wore and if their outfits lived up to the hype that I was excited to see what they wore. So whatever your viral video was, if you can stitch it with some kind of update or reaction, even if it's to say, oh, I didn't anticipate this video to take off, but let's talk more about X thing. Like you can pull something from the comments or you can see, you know, especially what other people are saying in the dialogue or if you have updated thoughts since the video went viral, this is a great opportunity to, you can use the stitch feature on TikTok or the remix feature on Instagram Reels, depending on which platform this was for. And basically just use it as a chance to build on your own momentum. The second thing that I would do is reply to as many comments as possible. And you don't have to reply to the trolls or anything, but even people who are trolling are going to help push your video in the algorithm. So just something to keep in mind. But for people who leave thoughtful comments on your videos or who tag their friends or things like that, you can reply to their comments to basically double the comments engagement on your videos. And I think that going beyond just like an, oh, thanks, or an emoji reply and actually responding to the person with something a bit more thoughtful than that is a great way to continue the conversation. You can even ask them a question back in the comments. For example, in my video, there was a bit of discussion about a celebrity who was not attending this year and why that might be. So we were having a bit of a discussion back and forth in the comments about what the reason could have been. And then the third thing that I would do with still just this one video, the video that went viral, is to basically create spin-off videos. So we already talked about doing a stitch or remix of the video, but now we wanna talk about spin-off videos. And this is really all thanks to the ability to reply to someone's comment with a video. And this exists on Reels, TikTok, and even more recently, YouTube Shorts. So you can take someone's comment and reply to a comment with a video. So out of those five people, if someone left a comment and said, yes, Lizzo killed it, I could take that comment and then reply to it with a video and say, Lizzo was actually the performer at the Met Gala and here's another outfit that she wore for her performance and let's talk about that and why that's relevant. So if there are any comments that you think can spark another video that's again, kind of a spin off of this successful video, then you should definitely look for those comments and think about those opportunities to create more and more content. And again, all of this is about working smarter, not harder, right? Taking this one video that already proved to be successful and continuing to iterate on it. I will link my original video, the remix video, and some of the reply videos down below in the description box. They all are currently live on my Instagram in case you'd like to go kind of take a closer look at these videos. And I will also add that I tried to create all of these videos within 48 hours of that initial viral moment, especially because 
In this case, the video topic that went viral was about the Met Gala, which is something that only really happens once a year. So I think it is important to note that ideally something like this would be about something evergreen, right? I think my friend Rebecca, who is a food blogger, her blog is The Practical Kitchen, is a great example of this. She has a recipe for mini focaccia bread, like that you can make just for one person. And that reel, people love it. And that is something she can repost like every month if she wants to. Every month of the year is a good time to have a mini focaccia, obviously, but will people still be as interested in the Met Gala in like January? Potentially not. So just something to think about in terms of you can take advantage of current events and current trends to spike your views initially, but then we want to investigate further what is it about this video, aside from the fact that this like topic was trending right now, that we can really replicate and continue to iterate on to accelerate our growth. So per the hourglass theory, now you're kind of have this opportunity to be in the middle of the hourglass and accelerate your growth. So what was it specifically about that video that caused it to go viral? The next step here is looking at what elements of that video I could continue to replicate. Because like I said, I, I mean, I could talk about the Met Gala all year round, but people are always gonna be most interested in the Met Gala when it's actually happening, which is the first week of May. However, there are other parts of the video that I can take and iterate on and test out different things with to see if I'll still get the same result. So so let's even take the topic for a minute. The topic you could argue was Met Gala, but maybe to think a bit more broadly, what if that topic was red carpet fashion? So I could also look at different red carpets that are happening and do different commentary on those red carpets. So that is one thing that I tested with the Cannes Film Festival, although that video didn't really perform in the same way. And I'm not sure exactly why that was. It could have just been because of how many more people pay attention and watch the Met Gala versus Cannes. But it was an opportunity to experiment with it and see if I could replicate that same result with the topic. So you can think about taking a topic and making it more broad, even more so than red carpet fashion. You could go all the way to fashion broad in general, or you could take Met Gala and go more specific, and you could then do a look into the Met Gala from 2022, from 2021. You could go back and kind of catalog it in that way in different videos if you wanted to. So think about the topic and whether you can broaden it or refine it even more to find something that works for you, even if that one topic is no longer relevant or kind of at the top of its peak of interest. Another thing to consider is just the visual nature of the video. So this was an interesting video for me because I had really never tried doing green screen on Instagram before where I was holding actually this mic, this lapel mic that I use, I was just holding it plugged into my phone as a mini mic and doing green screen where you could see everyone's outfits behind me that I was talking about. And the irony of that also is I actually shot that in TikTok because Instagram's green screen and most of their in-app Reels features are not the most user-friendly. I did a screen recording from TikTok and then shared it over on Instagram. But I think that green screen mini mic is a visual cue that people kind of do want to stop and see what are you talking about because it's not just you. There's also potentially in the case of the Met Gala video, a celebrity that they recognize who's behind me while I'm doing the green screen talking. So that is already something interesting and something visually that people might stop and say, oh, like, what's she talking about? It's almost like a little news segment in a sense. It was kind of like, what are we discussing here, you know? So I think even that visual cue of having the green screen and the mini mic is something that I said, okay, well, I could do green screen and mini mic for lots of different stuff, not even just red carpet fashion or Met Gala fashion. And the next thing that I looked at for this video that worked so well was what was like the pacing and the length of that video? Because I see so many mixed opinions from different people online, you know, 
every video that performs well for me is under seven seconds exactly. And then other people who are like, no, you gotta do the longer videos. You gotta make them as long as you possibly can. And the truth is that different things are gonna work for different creators. So to look at this video and realize that I actually talked for the whole 90 seconds, which is the maximum length of a reel that you can create on Instagram was kind of a recognition of, oh, okay, so people don't mind listening to me talk for 90 seconds. And maybe some people dropped off sooner than that, but the fact that it was a full 90 seconds of the video was something to keep in mind. And I could say, okay, great. So I can aim to make other videos that are the same length. And then another thing I did visually was I tried to have the image behind me changing every couple of seconds. So even if I was just talking about Lizzo's outfit, right? I wouldn't just have one image behind me the entire time. I would try to look for pictures of that outfit shot from different angles, or if I was making a reference to something, maybe I would cut to another still image to kind of prove my point. And you can do this whether you are doing talking head videos by just changing up your background, zooming in a little bit, adding those elements of visual interest, because when it is a longer video, you do need to keep your audience's attention by adding those little cuts or on-screen text or other things to always have something new for them to be looking at if they're sticking with you for that whole time. So those are a couple of key things I noticed about my video, but really kind of putting your detective hat on and looking at your video and just writing down basic things about it, like length, 90 seconds, what's the visual description, if you were almost writing out like alt text for that video. All of these things are information that you can use to take and run with when you go to then create more similar videos like what you already have seen has worked. I think one important takeaway for me as a content creator too was for this video that went viral, for future videos that I would try to replicate, I wanted to prioritize using my own content content as much as possible versus pulling images of celebs from the internet. And that has more to do with just my own goals as a content creator and what I look for and what I want to do long term. Because if my goal is to make money from brand partnerships, for example, then using other people's content, you know, brands want to see original content from creators and want to think about how could their products fit into this type of content? Or how could this creator help tell a really engaging story that comes back to our products? And I think that that point is better served, at least like for fashion and beauty brands, which is what I am interested in and who I mainly work with when I do take on brand collaborations to say this creator is creating all of her own original content and here's how we could easily see us fitting into this story or us fitting into this narrative. And so one thing that's actually worked really well for me is saying, okay, length 90 seconds, still doing green screen video, but actually going in and kind of doing commentary on my own outfits because I have had my fashion blog since 2012, okay? I have thousands of photos of outfits from over the years. So going back in and doing things like this was me in my free people era and then someone commenting oh my gosh like the galaxy print and then saying oh my god yeah the galaxy print had us all in a chokehold in like 2014 and then doing a whole video about calling all my galaxy girlies let's talk about the galaxy print and then someone commenting oh yeah galaxy print got it from this store is that store still around and then me doing a whole thing about that store because i remember shopping at that store too and so that bit of nostalgia and having my own content and being able to comment on it has been performing not on the same viral level as the Met Gala, but those videos have still been getting like 13,000, 15,000, 20,000 views compared to like 1200, which for a while was kind of where my reels would plateau and flatline a little bit. And then in a kind of different style, but still thinking about the idea of, okay, how could I repurpose all of these photos from my early blogging days? So in some examples, I was doing the green screen video where the picture would be behind me. In a couple of other examples that have been performing well, I've been doing like, my style evolution where it'll be a quick little clip of me on the screen pointing at text that says like you know my style before and after i moved to new york or my style from 2013 through 2023 and those have been 
different than the Met Gala videos, right? There's no talking, they're much shorter, they're usually like 15 or 20 seconds, and they're showing the photos, but it's still that same concept of looking back on those outfits, looking back on like my early blogging days, but also seeing the progression. If you at the beginning of the video set up before and after, or from 2013 to present, people do kind of want to stick around and say, what changed? Like if this was the setup in the beginning, where are we now? And so you're piquing the viewer's curiosity and you're thinking about how can I get them to watch to the end to see this kind of transformation or to see this current result compared to what we started with. And I think that that is basic you know storytelling and really understanding how to tell a story from start to finish i do have a whole video with storytelling tips that i can also link down below if you want to improve your skills in that area and again being in the middle of the hourglass this is your opportunity to decide what you want to do so if you want to try one of these videos a week and still post the rest of your regular content look and see what's going on if those videos are getting infinitely more views then that might be your sign to increase production of those types of videos and hold off on your regular content just for a little while until you grow and have a bigger audience a more significant following where like I said, they naturally will start asking about other things or it gives you more room to go broad because you're already reaching more people to begin with. So it's all a balance of what you're looking for in your audience and what your long-term goals are. And if you haven't had a video take off or go viral recently, one thing that I would suggest that also really helped me before I even had this video go viral, something I was already planning on doing for the month of May was to go back and, you know, unfortunately I had to do this manually, but scroll back in TikTok, scroll back in Instagram Reels and say, what happened? Has worked for me in the past like what could I either just straight up repost because again we're just trying to work smarter not harder if you already created the video you could always repost it if it did well as long as it's not just back to back to back incessantly or also thinking about looking at your historically popular videos and thinking is there a way to recreate this video or do an updated version of it and for this again scrolling all the way back in your TikTok and Instagram reels and making note of these videos is a great place to start like I said if you haven't had a video go viral recently that's been a recent example what can you go back and say hey this historically was popular for me, or this really did take off a few years ago. And again, even if it's not the content you create now or the content you want to create, going through this process and asking yourself again, what was the length of this video? What was the visual? What did it look like? What was the topic? To give yourself something to go off of. I think a lot of times creators, you know, attribute viral videos to luck, but I think that smart creators can take something that was lucky like a viral video and create a strategy around it. If you want to grab the exact spreadsheet that I used to find all of my historically popular videos and listen to a little video walkthrough of me showing you exactly how I pulled my historically popular content, that's all inside of my Patreon. So that is always linked down below. That and you know, every month it gets updated with new creator resources. So you can go ahead and check that out if you want to go back and pull all of your historically popular content and try some of these strategies with those videos. And, you know, for me, it's only been a few weeks since this happened. And I really wanted to make this video to share with you my real time strategy of this is what I'm doing right this minute to grow my account. And I keep seeing the results from it. So I hope you enjoyed this real time look into my real strategy and what I've been working working on. So I'll be sure to keep you updated of any progress in the month of June and beyond. And if you want to learn some of my best tips for making more engaging reels and TikToks, be sure to check out the up next recommendation on the screen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.